crowd and then we test what's cool. Okay, you know you yeah. Okay, um What's going on? We back, man. Literally it's no pressure. One Y'all know what the fuck what it is. Well we got go ahead and introduce yourself. What up, world? It's your boy, man, King James, man, CEO of Rap City ATL in the building. Okay. I guess we ain't going to start right off at uh, Rap City. We're going to, okay, we're going to start off. So where are you originally from? Um, I'm originally um, from um, Calhoun, Georgia. Calhoun? Yeah, is Calhoun. It? Calhoun's uh, about like 20 minutes, uh, well, about 30 minutes from Chattanooga. We're on the north side um, of Georgia, um, Dalton. Right before you get to Tennessee. Yeah, I used to deliver up to uh, Dalton. Y'all got mountains out there? Uh, Fort Mountain's out there, yes. Yes, indeed. Huh? Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, did you grow with uh, both of your parents? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. So, you had a, a pretty good, like, home life. It wasn't no, like, uh, I guess trauma, like, like growing up with you. I had my trials. Um, I did have my trials growing up in different neighborhoods. So we did jump around. I didn't just up and you know, I was uh, being just in Calhoun. We started. Um, I mean, we lived in here in Atlanta a few years um, when I was younger, and I think we lived the time in Alabama. And then what we part of Alabama? Uh, Athens. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Athens, Alabama. I'm lived down there for a little bit. Um, and then kind of came back to Calhoun and whatnot. So um, I had to transition back in those days in the early 90s and stuff, transitioning from a whole uh, a black environment <coughs> school into um, a car, uh, white schools was kind of difficult growing up. So I uh, had our trials and tribulations. But as far as um, in house, so I had a pretty good upbringing. So, like, um, when you switched over, like, was you getting, like, jumped on and called nigga and all that kind of stuff? Oh, all that. I got a lot of that. Um, you know, when I first, you know, first uh, got to school, um, the, they was kind of picking on me because of my skin color and stuff like that. The white people, people weren't scared of you? Well, that too. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get beat up, nothing like that, but they would, that because they couldn't beat me up, and I, I beat up a lot of people. I fought a lot when I first got, you know, introduced to, um, you know, all, like an all white school. Like it was pretty much like me, and I would have like one other, maybe two black people in the in the classroom with like 30 kids. So they stay child to be cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It went, it went really going down like that at first. You know what I'm saying? Another yeah, black dude looking at each other was, classroom. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, we look at each other like, where you live? I'm like, I don't live over here. And like, we live over here. I'm like, damn, I'm never see y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying so it's just me and, and, and all the white kids and stuff like that. So they got their own clicks and everything. Yeah, you know, so they they were you just making fun of you to, you know, kinda, you know, you know, agitate you, but after a while I think football saved me though. Um to start playing football that's when I, you know, really start chilling, making friends and um start fighting so much because I had to stay out of trouble. My stay out of trouble is I can't play football and football was my outlet. Mm-hmm. And then that was my respect level for everybody else. It was like, all right, it's a shame it's like that, but being on the sports, if you play ball and you're in a predominantly white school like that, and you come into schools, like the coaches automatically look at you like, you playing football, you playing basketball, <laughs> like what you what you about to do? <laughs> what you about to do for the school? Because yeah. it ain't many of y'all here, and the ones we that y'all here, learn, yeah, we, we know. know. <laughs> It's sad to say, but it's like that. It, it was hey, like do you like Deion up. Sanders? Um, they go out there and yeah. catch it like him, man. But <laughs> and, and it was like we went on the football field, and and, and it's like we 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 regulated, like you right. know what I'm saying. We ran the ran the ball team, and because we we did what we want, so we got uh, huddle. got the respect. We got in the huddle when they try to run the play. Give it to James. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll give it to James. Okay, so like the toughest part of growing up, you would say like that was like the school thing, or was it something else that that was kind of like like traumatizing to you? That was the tough. The toughest thing for me was probably religion and and school, um, because.
because my parents were very religious. So as they grew into different religions, you know, it became stricter on my life. So what like, is Jehovah's Witness? No, uh -uh, it's called, they end up being apostolic right now because it went from like Baptist to the Pentecostal. I then don't they even went know to, what that is. To apostolic, yeah, and, and, and they go after, I guess, the 12 apostles um, from the Bible and, and it's strictly from the King James version of, of the law, I guess. And um, it kind of hindered me in a lot of things because they sheltered me. So I couldn't do a lot of things. I couldn't I couldn't be out there with the kids, like spend the night with my friends and stuff right. like that. Like it, it was it was kinda rough. Was up for a while. And like even now, like me and my mother, we don't have a a relationship like that because of the religion. She like she feels like I'm condoning sin and 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 by promoting and pushing stuff with music and stuff like that. So I guess you know, she has to, I guess I'm denounced or whatnot. So she can't, um, don't, don't want to interact with me because I'm, I'm doing music. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. So that's it's, how, it's been like that for years. Yeah, that like, that's like how like Christianity is to a certain extent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people who really be into it. So it's like, that's probably the most, the, the hardest part of it because it's kind of like choosing my lifestyle it's kind of separating me from some of my, my inner family that I grew up with because of the religion base so um, it's like they have their beliefs and I have mine and I'm just I just want to live life I just want to live my life and I don't want to have any boundaries on the way that I want to live my life if I want to help I don't see myself as um, hurting the community by helping people chase their dream in, in entertainment, in hip hop. There's a lot of snakes in the grass out here in Atlanta from when I came down here trying to figure out how to, how to get a name for myself um, and who to deal with, who to network with, who to, you know, really, really, met. how can I, can I mess with you and we help elevate our career together? Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of those people in yeah. Atlanta. And um, so, you know, I made my own brand, my own platform, um, that's which one I'm known for now, um, and that's for helping others, you know, to shine and to, you know, um, be better than you were yesterday. Okay, so with that, um, like, you got kids? Yeah. So does your mom, like, she don't want nothing to do with your kids neither? No, my child, they, they are all in my child's life. My child, you know, he be around them a lot. Okay, that's good. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's, he, they in his life. I guess they're trying to learn um, different mistakes. Baby, blow tomorrow, though, man. Let you hit, let you hit that million dollar mark, Devon. What you, what you think? You think she gonna? Um, she I think that, I think away? they're gonna probably make a big fuss out of it. Um, but that's just how I feel. I think they're gonna make a big fuss out of it. Cause I got a lot of things going on right now. Um, the new TV series is gonna be on Netflix. I'm gonna several. Um, I think they're gonna make a big fuss out of it. Cause I got a lot of things going on right now. Um, the new TV series is gonna be on Netflix. I'm gonna several. Um, movies coming in, coming out for 2021. Um, not uh, amongst you know all my awards that I've been getting for Rap City ATL and um, right now like the the controversy I got with Hood Rich uh, Films and Rap City and uh, it's a lot mm. I got going on right now so it's a lot of people that's after me so it's a lot of big moves that's coming so I just know they're gonna make a big stink out of it and, and just you know everybody got something they gonna like when somebody blow up. What's wrong? What happened? What can we attack? This man, you know, some people uh, might be like, Yeah, I always believed that you know, I always knew he was gonna do it, you know what I'm saying? You know, people will flip the script for you yeah, too. It's gonna be a lot more. of that too. It's gonna be and I and I told him the same thing. I told him, you know, I'm gonna be who I'm gonna be and if I do something, I'm gonna do all hardly and I'm not gonna play with it. I wanna be an entertainer, I'm gonna be an entertainer. I don't wanna be a side entertainer and be like, yo, I'm a rapper, and I'm like making calls and music, and I ain't gonna get paid for. I'm 38 years old. I mean, I make revenue dreams. I can pay my bills. Now. So, um, I even met Two Chains before he was Two Chains, and when I was first starting out, I had a chance to uh, do his VIP. And I was back in Dalton, Georgia. He was down there booked as a uh, Titty Boy, mm -hmm. um, and I remember calling my uh, my 
homeboy, I had a group that I was in and rapping. I was like, you know, Lewis, you know what I'm saying? I got a titty boy up here, bring the city up here real quick like that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, man, I ain't got, I ain't got our city press. I was like, burn, burn something up real quick. You know what I'm saying? Just get the shit down here. And he did, run the shit down me to the club, uh, took a black marker, scribbled on, folks took phone and put a phone number on it and gave it to me and shit. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. I got, I got it. So I go back into the booth. We ain't know what I'm saying. Um, he had asked me to find my um, blunt and everything, a Rello. So I had got the Rello and shit. You know, we break it up, breaking the weed up and shit. I handed him a CD. Nigga looked at the CD. He looked at me, looked at back the CD. And then that nigga went to cussing me the fuck out. He said, nigga, what the fuck is this? The fuck I'm going to do with this shit? Ain't got your name on it. You got your name scribbled in marker on it. You ain't got your face on it. You ain't got, like, the, 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 no, no, no nothing on it to make me want to listen to this shit. This is the shit I flick out the fucking seat out of my car window when I um, ride down the interstate. This bitch gonna sell. And I'm like, damn. But then, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling like this small right here. Like, well, you know, I was just. And he was being what I was just, I was short notice and you right here, so I didn't know I have a chance, but then he broke it down to me. He's like, nigga, I'm gonna feed my kids, 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 kids with this. So he's like, anytime, I was like, I'm gonna put my all into it. I'm gonna make sure my face is on it. I'm gonna make sure my brand is on it. I'm gonna make sure it's got everything it needs to be on it. So I'm gonna look at this and I ain't gotta go search a lot of places to find or how to find this nigga, it's right here. He's like, James, what the fuck? Um, he said, what the fuck people going to watch you for? Uh, he's like, um, what'd he tell me? He said, uh, why Why would people watch you if you don't give them a reason to watch? If I don't give them a reason to watch, what the fuck they going to watch you for? That's what he told me. He said, James, I don't, if you don't give them a reason to watch, what the fuck they going to watch you for? I took everything that he had told me and I implemented it into my career. And I've been pushing ever since. I'm still waiting for that day when I can walk back up to two Chinese and like, yo, look what you created. Because I'm going to push the next cigar. You might run into him down here and learn the Escobar. Hey, I've been waiting, man. I've been waiting. I know it's going to be epic, but I know the time. This motherfucker be at Escobar all the time on regular day. He got two restaurants down. The time is everything. I'm building. I'm building. And I want to be at the level to where when I face him, I'm like, okay. You remember this? Yeah, you remember? And I still got the picture. From, from the day when um, my mom's dress was probably about that short. Me, me and um, Titty Boy standing up there. I got the picture and everything. And I made sure I put it in this inbox and Instagram with the story behind it. So when it all blows up, he's going to be like, damn. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I've been setting this shit up for a long time. Okay, since you brought up Hood and Rings, okay, I remember he said, he said something about, he said, that's why you lost your team. So like, so is y'all still together, uh, the Rap City crew or whatever? Uh, yeah, for the most part, um, everybody's still um, lurking out there, kind of just waiting on the next move um, for Rap City. Um, since I'm leaving on that, um, it's gonna be a couple of changes um, to the cast. Um, but um, yeah, all in all, everybody's still on board. Okay, so. Yeah, in the video I seen you, it was like you, you got kind of choked up, like talking about it. You know, you were saying something about artists. They called you saying, basically, they they didn't receive anything from, from Hoodvig. So, like, you felt like he kind of tarnished your brand. Um, well, um, what had happened was um, I had been, ever since I came out with it, and let it be known, you know, what he was doing. Um, the responses really started coming to me in my Instagram of all the people he done fucked over. So, on one side, I got my OGs like, James, you don't do shit like this. Like, just just chill out. You know what I'm saying? You feel me in. I don't even know what happened. What happened? Feel um, me and, and I'm gonna explain. And then on the other side, it's the community of everybody that when I came to Hood Rich Films, because you know, Hood Rich Films, he, he talks the, the, the logo of Hood Rich Entertainment. Mm -hmm. and, and you go in the studio, you hear that the, the same drop they do on the right on Hood Rich Entertainment. Hood, 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 hood Rich. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not Hood Rich at all. And Scream has denounced them, Pretty Boy Tanks denounced them. Mm -hmm. um, they got a lawsuit going up against them and everything. And so it was a lot of 
controversy going on about that. But me coming into Hood Rich Films, I really didn't know exactly what that consisted of. What I just know my on. brand right. and your facility. So if I use everything that you got, because of my brand, I don't care nothing about what you've been doing. I'm about to come in and turn this bitch up. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? When I came into the Rich Films, there wasn't even a signature on the wall. Like, there's a big wall, neon wall, that we make all the artists come sign. There wasn't even a signature on that motherfucker when I came. Mm. And and I was one of the first ones to put the rap, my Rap City shit all big right there and then plaster. Now there's not a fucking space on the wall, fucking up on the ceiling, up around into the booth. Like, there's so many people that signed that motherfucking wall from corrupt from back in the day um, to um, Goody Mob and everything. I have everybody in there signing that wall for me being in there. So every relationship that I had had with him, he broke it. And, and it was my fault because I didn't put him on contract. But I figured, you know, we're coming in, we could have a good, you know, a verbal agreement. This is what's going on. You ain't got a lot going on. I do, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to help, help, you know, bring this to a head. So our first agreement was twelve hundred dollars a month. That happened like twice. After that, it's like when bills got hard, he pressured me to kick in more money, or by giving me the whole expenses of the whole building and the power, the lights, the security. And I was already making sure that the security team that was over Hood Rich that was all me, because I have a bike crew. And everything, and some of my boys are um, um, arm officers, some of them police officers. We are we ride together, we die together. So they come out and do security and stuff for me in the club, and I was doing all of that off of GP, but I was also paying them and paying for the bills at, at Goodrich. So just to keep it afloat, because if Goodrich go down, then I ain't got nowhere to shoot my show. But he yet would complain about. Paying bills, but then the next day after Rap City, we would, and him not paying nobody to to be in the facility to do shit. The next day we would see the nigga come in with fucking brand new clothes on from <laughs> Lennox Mall, four hundred dollar goddamn shoes to tie they fucking self, and, and then <laughs> they purchase a stack of ones like this, and then tricking these shits off with the strippers and shit like that. And not only that, when niggas coming in there to clean up and help free. He would cuss niggas out for little shits. Look and cuss you out so disrespectfully, like get the fuck out of my building type, all kinds of shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck you and all of this. Like it was a spoiled child or something. And everybody sitting there watching doing this. For me, I had became stuck in it because of the artist. I'm not I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the progression of the hip hop culture. So Rap City was a beacon. I've been running, I've been Rap City before Hood Rich, I'm Rap City after the Hood Rich. And I've been award winning into the situation. So all the artists were loving the scene I had set up. I was you I was doing the interview like usual on the radio and then all of a sudden from there was live studio artists, you go to the stage with the lights, the camera, do your performance, you this, that, and the third, and we stream. You know what I'm saying? The artist was loving that right there. It was like a real live 106 in part type situation. So for me, I was formatting that and learning how to produce a show and, and take my show from just an internet award winning internet radio show to a, a new platform, TV, internet radio, and streaming like that. So I was getting people from all over the country coming in still every Friday, populating them up every Friday, just knock them off. Cassidy, big legends like Cassidy, Goody Mob, Three Six Mafia, um, Sons of Funk, um, um, Faye Bowles, um, TJ DJ, everybody was coming to my show. And but he was taking all the proceeds. So I had came up with a new campaign of who got the juice. So I told all the artists all month long, I'm going you're gonna come in, get your interview. Uh, um, and perform the best artists. I'm going to give you a trophy um, and you're going to take that trophy to go to the finale. The finale is when I had three, six months for everybody and their mama came out. Notice all these legends that came out for me, they came out for free. Mm -hmm. I ain't paying none of them. They coming out because they support what I've been doing mm -hmm. and Rap City ATL. You know, I do it um, for the love. So, 
Um, at the end of the campaign, I was gonna give them, um, make sure they got a beat from one of my homeboys, Beaver Music Capital, who's Rap City, Mike Beasy, who's Rap City, he's the super producer, he's gonna do their record, um, record it and have Hood Rich shoot the video, and then from Hood Rich, he's gonna drop it on World Star Hip Hop. So, all month long, I'm, I'm doing this, booking artists, everybody's paying, he's taking all the proceeds. Come on, this is paying for the budget for dropping on World Star and everything like this. This is why he's taking all the money because after the 1200, we came to another agreement to where, look, we just gonna do a split. Half of everything that comes to Rap City gonna go to um, Hood Rich Films, pay the bills, the other half will come to the company in Rap City. But he just started taking all of it. So I'm talking about making sure that this shit gonna go on World Star. So I was just like, instead of causing a fuss right now, and disrupting my show because it's been running since 2016. Up till now, I'm not one to be hurt. I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I'm just gonna make sure that these people are coming in because at the end of this finale, I was like, these niggas don't be on World Star Hip Hop, man. You gonna have some problems. And that's kind of end up what happened because at the end of it, he played me on my live finale episode with everybody in the building. Now I'm trying to come down to the choosing the last artist that's coming on. One of these boys, the artist I'm managing right now, um, Fringlish and Dope, that was part of the winning um, campaign. But he ended up saying live that we're going to do all three of the finale people that we end up choosing out of three. We're supposed to pick one out of three. It was two girls, one match, Mozzie, and it was Fringlish and Dope as a group. Then he said we was going to do all three. And it was like, James, uh, Rap City's just going to have to do a couple more of these who got the juice. Um, shows and whatnot, and we just gonna shoot all three. So when he said that, I'm thinking like, okay, well you OG, you shooting the shit, it's not gonna cost you much to shoot it and nothing like that, so the money's already been made, I already calculated up to $8,000 over the month that it's mm -hmm. been brought in. And I'm sitting there like, all right, so everybody should be going on World Star Hip Hop with another week going by, ain't nobody going on World Star Hip Hop, he's still taking all the room. Then another week go by, he's still taking all the room. And I'm sitting there like, all right, so the final straw ended up, I was getting ready to go on air. I had brought in a new um, co-host, um, Nicole. And I was, um, we was getting ready to go on air, got the set all set up, and all of a sudden she disappeared. I was like, looking for her. I was like, what the fuck is Nicole? And I was like, she's just here, it's time for us to go on air. So I'm looking for her, and I, my sister come up, Tony come up, and I'm looking for her. I can't find her. And I was like, Tony, you seen the code? He said, no, I ain't seen the code. So I, I started looking through the studio, and I ended up finding her in the room with um, OG's daughter and and her her dyke girl boyfriend, Ghost, in the room with Nicole by themselves. Yeah. Nicole got the mic looking crazy, like, this, just disgusted. Mm -hmm. And I'm just walking in the room like, Nicole, you ready to go on air? And she was like, uh... And next thing you know, she come out of her mouth is, I'm just going to hand you this mic and this is not what we discussed and everything and I'm just, I'm just going to be done with it. And I was like, what the fuck? Because... Just a minute ago, we was setting up and we was getting ready to go on. This your second episode on Rhapsody ATL. Jay was going to be out this week because he was in Memphis doing a big show with Moneybag, yo, and them. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was just going to be us, me and her. And I was like, this is going to be good for us because it's one-on-one -on -one so I can break you into being a host on Rap City. And she was like, Ghost just says, oh, no, no, no. Don't take what we just discussed with what you and James had going on because it's two different things. So I'm in the room still like, well, what the fuck is y'all talking about, period? It got her like this. And she was like, well, and Ghost and, and Kid's like, well, I'm just going to step out the room and, and let y'all talk. So they stepped out the room. So I was just uh, with their recording. I said, Cole, I said, what did they just tell you? And she was like, well, James, she said, they said basically that um, one of the artists that I had bring in, that I was bringing in, I wanted to treat on the Rap City um, ATL platform because I've been with them all week and they've been popping bottles and just taking care of me all week through in Atlanta, wherever we at, baby. I'm in VIP, whatever. So I was like, man, come to Rap City and I got you. 
So they were like, well, the artist that I brought, that was the artist she was managing, they wasn't good. They had to pay full entry to get on. Um, Rhapsody ATL, James can't pull no strings to tell anybody who can be on Rhapsody ATL. He doesn't run Rhapsody ATL. Hoodridge Films runs Rhapsody ATL. Then told her that um, coming into Rhapsody ATL, she's going to be working for free because it's a $2,000 a week overhead to shoot the show of Rhapsody. So until Rhapsody is making $2,000 a week, you're going to be working on the show for free. <laughs> this ain't even all of it. <laughs> and she's telling me I'm getting more disgusted. She's telling me so. She said, she said, um, all of the uh, any package that he worked out with you is Noel and Boy, um, uh, is Noel and Boy, and that I don't have the right right to to make any transactions to to make it compensate her for being on my show. All the money has to go to OG Hood, Rich. Just trying to knock you out. Yeah, bro. And, and told her that and I her, always... And her in front of her. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to work for you for free, and I'm going to be bringing out the So I'm still like, what the fuck? And then she's like, James, they said that you always have guest co-hosts on your show right now. Um, and, and that I think that he probably only put you on the show because you have a pretty face, and he think he can make money off of you. So I was like, so after that discussion, we in the room. We in the room. Bro, that's that's a pause on it. That's that's what OG Hood ever said about that. That's what Kia and and Ghost. That's Kia is OG Hood Rich's daughter that was, I guess, you know, doing all his his business and was telling her this. So we in the room together and they tell her and she told me this and I was like, Okay, I said, give me the microphone. I said, let me take this microphone. I open up the door. I said, here, kid. I said, and ghost. I said, here's your microphone. I said, here's your microphone. And I said, I'm done with this full gazy ass shit. And I started making my exit. There was a couple artists that I already booked that was going to air for that night. Yeah. One of them I booked personally because I had started saying, like, look, you're going to book, you're going to send the money straight to Rhapsody ATL and then send it to me and whatnot. So, G.S. Williams was one of them. I walked him up to his artist. I was like, I got my wallet. I said, here's your $100 right here. Here's your money back. Um, um, I'm going to get back with you to get your artist back on the show when I get back up and running. But he was like, James, don't even worry about it. He said, I see what's going on. I've been peeked it out. He said, big dog, I'm rocking with you. Another artist was like, man, don't do this. Don't do this. Then the third, I'm like, no, nah, it's okay, bro, because I'm just not going to keep on doing this because there's nobody going to tell me how to run my brand. I was Rap City well before, I was award winning Rap City well before I came to Hood Rich. Mm. I'll be this after Hood Rich and I'll be damned if he gonna be de telling me how to run my show. And then you got the daughter in here talking for you like, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Y'all doing that fool gazeness and everything and then they gonna tell me what change you already know what the business is and everything. This is where she fucked up again. I'm trying to leave. She gonna tell me, you know what the business is? I said, what the business was? She said, you know it was $1,500. You told the to call 2000 but you out the door telling me it's $1,500 a week shooting my show. I was like, $1,500 a week for what? For me to set my own show up, for you to shoot my show with two fucking camera phones, and I gotta set my own shit up and do everything myself, so you charging me $6,000 a month, and then watch you trick off all this fucking money on these hoes and these strippers and this weed and all this shit that you fucking buying? And watching you continuously do that, the whole staff, man. He ain't paying nobody. Yeah. Nobody out the whole situation. We all like. Yeah, all interns. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you, you lucky just, ain't nobody jumped on his bro, ass. Bro, bro, you just don't know the half of what the fuck is you going on, bro. bro. You you it's going like, on. Yeah, to me, finally, by the bill. Bro, bro, like, and then, so, back to that thing when I was choking up. It's because after I went public and left, you know what I'm saying? One of the artists that hit me up. I knew I had helped shoot his one of his music videos. He hit me on my inbox, so I changed his show number. And I was like, fuck. So I called him, answered the phone, and I said, as soon as I answered the phone, I said, bro, tell, please tell me that you didn't sign up for that hood rich management shit. And he said, he sighed, he said, yeah, man, <laughs> James, I did. I said, fuck. I said, tell me this thing. I said, please tell me that when you signed up for the management, that Rap City ATL wasn't the only stage that you have been on since you signed. And he said, yeah, nigga, I have. I said, 
damn, I know what's really going on. And he was starting to slick tell people, yeah, Hood Rich Films run Rap City ATL, come on in. And I didn't know how much clientele that I was actually getting from the Hood Rich brand mm. because he wasn't sending it to me like that. He was just sending it, taking that money, yeah, and putting them on the show real quick. Paper. Yeah, it wasn't no Hood Rich Films, that was Rap City. Right. It was straight rap city. There's a reason why the hip hop awards came there. There's a reason why Ty You Know came. The reason why Boosie Them came to shoot that video. The reason why Trouble came to shoot that video. The reason why Cassie pulled up to come see rap city. Them niggas didn't come to Hood Rich. Them niggas was coming for rap city. And he was taking all that. Mm. And wasn't giving it a shine like that. So, mm, mm. Uh, And I was going to, I went to that for like nine months. Before it was just like, I just couldn't do it no more. Um, Man, you telling people certain other shit. The artists is there, come. You taking to the whole holler at you real quick. Why you doing your thing? Yeah, and, and that's why I'm looking at my OG. <laughs> I'm telling the OG like James pipe down. I'm like, man, I can't pipe down on this nigga, man, because one, not only have I wasted about twenty thousand dollars into into this foolishness that he has no analytics. I'm like, he gonna have BDS and everything. That ain't no BDS. You talking about charging artists three hundred dollars or what? Come into this radio room, you to turn on the mic and act like we on the radio, and so we can listen to that music, nigga. No. And then went on Instagram and paid some fool gazy ass nigga to, to boost the numbers on the Instagram and have a bunch of bots just commenting on the shit like I love your life and this is so amazing and emoji 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 but you getting all these comments and you got 1700 people looking viewing in talking about yo send your 25 dollars in the og hood rich cash app you're spending live on og hood rich radio this that and the third there's no og hood rich radio you're not spending to nobody out of that radio room but your instagram live and you're paying for that food gauge you bought shit so it's like bro all this shit is capped it's capped in a motherfucker so that's why I jumped up out of the radio room. You couldn't, if you look, if you would look at the live feeds, when I first came, I was on there first, mm -hmm. seen the cap Asian and got the fuck up off of it. Then just started doing it in the big area to where I could stream it straight to YouTube. So I knew, at least knew then, it was streaming to a lot of people and then they could, the artists could take it and pitch it. But leaving How Unique Radio, I went from having like from 20 to well, from 40 to 20,000 listeners on my radio show uh, uh, every Friday to like 100 motherfuckers on 100 Rich Films. Mm. And that's how I kind of got played. But I'm the type, I don't care about that. I care about if you give me what I need to pitch my show. If I can pitch my show, I'm going to pitch it to a bigger network. The bigger network going to come in and do what the fuck I need them doing like this is what's going on right now. Like well, before I came in, I just left BHT Network. Um, and before that, I got TST Network, so I'm about to get ready to or, um, air back to 36 million subscribers on one network, and the other network has 62 million subscribers with my own production teams. So it's okay. not no, it's done, it, and that's why I'm not stressing on the money, and the reason why I fry them like a hot chicken in a skillet is because, one, you're not going to play me, and when you play me, you played all my artists. So when you start stealing from me and the artist stealing from me, you stealing from the hip hop community. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you can't eat here. This is the reason why I started Rap City ATL is to filter through all y'all snake ass niggas. And you think that I'm just gonna leave the money I don't give a fuck about. But my name and all these artists that's in my inbox, there's no I know that's only there for Rap City that you got their money. There's some of the artists that I know saved for months. To Once, just so you can shoot that shit and get your manager. They believe in they shit. They and they like, know. James, I ain't getting no more fucking with the nigga won't answer my phone call or nothing no more. And I'm like, damn, bro. Damn, my fault. And I know that when I came there, I encouraged it because they thought it was it was cool. Mm -hmm. Because James over there. Rap City ATL's over there. Rap City's got all these awards. Most of them nominated. They out there. Everybody knows them. Like, if, if James over there then, then we can go over there and safe. But it wasn't safe. It and wasn't playing safe. you too. Yeah, play yeah. the fuck out of you, bro. Damn. So, That's the industry for you, bud. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah it's treacherous, man. You supposed to give a fuck. But, I, but it, it, it kind of won in my favor because, I, I mean, me frying them, it gave me it gave me the beef of the line. Everybody from DJ Screaming, everybody in my inbox now. And like, damn, and it made more support. 
come for me and everybody's like, you know, James, well, I got this. Man, I got this. I got that. Yeah, that's all it was, man. That's all it was. Okay, so when so I guess it's kinda of sound like some cash money type of shit, like where people just robbing you. So you think y'all could ever just sit down and be cool after this? Like Oh um, no, nah, I mean I don't wanna to talk to them. I, I ain't I ain't mean, with it. You so cap. You done stole money for so many people that I I just really want to. I'm surprised just... you bold like that. Yeah, like, man. I like it. Really, I, I, some people really rap about what they bro, living out bro, here, bro, man. I can show you screenshots when they talking about this, this nigga don't get my money. I'm going up there to air that shit out, bro. <laughs> It's already to that level. Exactly. It's that many people. So right. it, it's just that over, whole situation is just right, fucking now, toxic. If you did over 100 people and took 1,500 from over 100 people. Yes, bro. How much money? It come in and come, uh, come in every every weekend like with, with three, four hundred dollar shoes every week. I mean, like, I was telling um, uh, one of my people at Hefner Boys, they with me now, because a lot of people, when I left, like, the Heartland, so they all like, you know, I told them, I said, if you want shit to work, tell them to uh, um, chop that budget, chop that limited small budget and pay his people. If, if you really about, you know, what you talk about, I've been in this, this shit since hip hop started, but you 56 years old living out your warehouse. Like nigga, you 56. I'd be damned if I'm 56 still shooting niggas music videos with my fucking phone. I'm not, at 56, I'm not touching shit. There's going to be a nigga that's going to shoot that shit for me with the red, and I'm just going to walk up, oh, shit, that go big homie. They go OG right there. OG just stepped out the Bentley cool and kicking it. I'm going to be with y'all for a couple of hours, and I'm going back to my house. My back hurt. I got to take my blood pressure pills. That's an OG, but everybody's still going to get paid, and I ain't even here. That's an OG. But you over here tricking off with the hoes, smoking the weed and, and all this extra shit, by going to the mall dressing like a young nigga <laughs> over here ain't paying no goddamn he body. I'm just being honest. I'm he just being honest. I'm 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 just being honest. You know what I'm saying? Like you a whole 32 year old nigga out here spending money on scrims and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what you doing out here at 56. Something went wrong. And that's like for me, coming up into the game, I'm like, nigga, I'm just not getting my name out here. And I'm looking where you are right now. So you saying that you was here at one point, but so for some reason that you was here, you done came back down to here on my climb up. So I know not to do nothing that you fucking doing. Oh, here, nothing that you're fucking saying because you're 56 and you live out your warehouse still pushing hood rich films that ain't even your shit. That ain't even your shit. So the brand, it ain't even your brand. It's like, it's like Nike and uh, Great Value. The, from Walmart. I was just about to say, fuck this Great Value. Great Value is the brand from Walmart. When you go in Walmart, they got their own brand. Great on Value. Bread and shit. You know what I'm saying? On bread. You got the Great Value that's a dollar. Mm -hmm. Then you got, you know what I'm saying? Some bean yeah. that's $2.25. So if you want $2.25, that's Hood Rich NT. But if you want um, Hood Rich Films, you're going to the dollar store. But you're going to pay Hood Rich NT price. For dollar store material, mm. and that's that's the problem. So yeah. No, but I understand, man. I understand dealing with these video directors and shit. These folks got down on want to edit your shit the right way, and you don't pay it for this and that. I understand the industry shit, but mm -hmm. you gotta put niggas on the contract, bro. Yes, yes. You and do. people, you know, I, you know, and you might be like. We cool, or this and that, or ooh, ooh, ooh. But all a lot of people trying to let money come involved. Mm -hmm. Like, real shit. Motherfuckers ain't keeping one thousand. Okay, so, um, yeah, man, that, that that went deep. Like, so it was like he was robbing you, and you, I don't know, that, could, that sound like a sound fight. Sound like he robbing the ladder, what it sound like. Yeah, he robbed you. Well, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of politics. So when you're a level that I am, you can't, you gotta move accordingly. So, right. um, Pretty much. Oh, I just took it. 
Yeah, you know, I, I just took the route that I, I did because I don't want to promote violence to my people. And I want to show them there's a better route that you can go um, without, you know, destroying each other. Mm. But also know that, you know, these snakes in the grass, I'm cutting that bitch. I'm going to cut the fuck out of them. And I already told them, nigga, you will not eat here in Atlanta. So you just will not eat here. If you go, if niggas go live on, on, if they see him go live, they gonna see a hashtag. I told everybody hashtag cap on that live, so they don't know if they see that fake ass shit he got going on there, and you a real ass nigga hashtag cap because something I figured out. Once you get to a certain level in hip hop, because it's levels to the shit, and as I started reaching those higher charts and talking to my OG niggas, all the OG niggas knew. Like, yeah, we already knew about Eddie. They don't even call him OG Hood Rich. You know, the upper echelon people, they call him Eddie. So I was like, Edwin, you know, and I thought about Edwin. That's his first name. It's just like everybody called him Eddie. He's like, yeah, we know about old scheming Eddie. Eddie scam, Eddie been scamming. And I'm like, well, damn. Yeah, if all of y'all know. niggas know they scamming, why y'all still letting this nigga stay out here and live and eat off of everybody that don't know? Right. That shit ain't cool. That shit ain't, that ain't real. That, that, that shit ain't real. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all no. still letting this nigga eat? And y'all telling me to pipe down? Like, no, I'm not going to pipe the fuck down. This nigga cannot eat. And if y'all scared to fucking tell him, I ain't. I'm going to tell the world. What up? Nigga, you cannot motherfucking eat. So say King James from Rap City, nigga. And I've been, I've been filtering through artists from 2016. Up until now, I got more awards than any nigga in, him, in the industry independently. Ain't nobody got more trophies than me, and I don't even be putting it out there like that. So I'm just letting them know all that snake in the grass shit, bro. No, nah, uh-uh. So for any artist trying to go over there and get some work, no. Don't go over there and get your ass scammed off that bullshit. Don't go over there and spend $1,500 to get your views and video shot for, uh, with a fucking phone. Don't do it. He's not. He charge you $300 for a radio interviewing. You interviewing to nobody. No, nigga, you can't eat here, bro. That's not what we do, bro, and that's not... How I got my awards is from airing to scamming these niggas to come um, be on the radio be, with me. Be. Come be on the radio with me, you know what I'm saying, my nigga, but we going to air to just nobody but us in this room. And that's the only people that's going to hear us. No, so that's not that's what we're so doing. So you doing that shit, though, because a lot of people in the industry don't look out for us. No, they, they don't, shit. bro. They and mean, I'm at the They be right once, once, once Eddie come to the side and be like, hey, I know we scamming you, but I'm going to cut you. I'm going to give you this shit. Motherfucking shit, they mouth. Let that nigga get scammed. Let that homeboy get scammed or whoever. I'm yeah, not with nigga, that shit, bro. That niggas do no. up in Atlanta, boy. They be like, but we, shit, I'm about to get paid. Whoa. It, it's the nigga. The community in Atlanta, us, we know. Mm-hmm. Because we live here. It's the niggas that's coming from out of town that don't know getting their heads busted wide the fuck open to the white meat. Because they don't know. All they know is this is black Hollywood. This right. is where the niggas be at. Right. This is where all the stars getting their shit right. done at. This is where all the action is coming for hip hop. Right. COVID 19, we the only city that's really We're been popping, open yeah. like that. Popping, popping. You know, you get played in Atlanta, bro. You get played across the United States. Our radio. Anybody who get on our radio, really like the industry, they play Atlanta music, bro. Yeah. All day. All day. Like, nationwide. They playing Atlanta radio, We bro. getting all the streams right now. All the activity. Tyler Perry acting a fool over there. Tyler Perry yeah. Studios shooting more movies over here. Like, everything's over here. So, um, it's up to us that know about the game to shed light to the others that's just continue to get lost in the sauce. Because they dream killers. Mm-hmm. You, you a nigga that's done spent $5,000 of your hard-earned money with the wrong nigga. Mm-hmm. Well, you could have had it with the right nigga. Yeah, and that's going to cause you to stop making music. Right. Man, fuck this shit. Right. You kill your uh, shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't doing this shit no more. I'm I'm going to go back to... Well, what you said kind of sound like the Dr. Dre shit night story, bro. Hey, man, I got a dope documentary coming for these niggas, man. Yeah, I ain't going to lie, man. My story dope. Well, Dr. Dre left with nothing, you feel me? And came back with everything. Bro, that's exactly what the fuck I'm on right now, and I'm about to. Everybody's been waiting on my next move, and like, like, what, what's what's next for James? And I'm like, I'm already been doing the TV series for Silent Witness. Um, just came back from New York. Uh, it was dope. Made some dope connections, and I got connected with VH2. Um, 
now and it's all gonna help me um, grow for 2021. So yeah, everybody gonna see your boy on Netflix and Amazon and you know what I'm saying? Uh, Comcast, you know, y'all about to see your boy all that, you know. I'm, I'm out there, but it just, I, I work for them. I, I work That's for them. That's what's up. I can't wait to see you. Okay, so how did you um hook up with Mike Beach? I seen, I seen you at, uh, like, a Boosie, like, what is it, a pool bash or something? The pool party? Yeah, yeah. with um, Boosie. Yeah. Rat City, bro. Um, Cucumber Challenge? No, no, I think party. it was the pool. Oh, that's, that's, it was the mansion pool party. Okay, that's trouble shit. My bad. I think I don't think about it. Yeah. Um, Mike, um, the, the Rap City. I was pushing Rap City. Uh, I think I met Mike in year, right at the end of year one. Um, and I was just um, just filtering through those dope artists. And some of the artists kind of connected um, and, and stuck around and started, you know, kept showing up to my shows. Um, and then I um, had a show with Mike Beasley one time. He was real lit. Um, uh, he was connected with all my other friends and stuff. And we just we saw, kept, kept coming around and we became friends. And, and we became like brothers and we've been together ever since. Pushing, pushing. That's what's up. So, so what do we got a date on your next, um, I guess your next show? Like what you got a date on or still like in the works? Um, I could put out a date. But I, I'm not gonna put out one just yet because of some things I need to um, um, really get in in, in the new format. Um, I have my locations. It's actually I'm, 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 I'm gonna do this much. I'm gonna do this much. It looks like I'm gonna have to like I said two shows: one on TST, one on BH2 um, Network. Rap City Atlanta, the podcast itself. Is going to be with BH2. BH2 is going to give me the capability to become a full out media platform and team. So they're they're mobile. So the same 4K quality they use to shoot my show, I can actually take them mobile and shoot somebody's event and like send out a reporter. You know, we're reporting live. This is Rap City ATL on the BH2 network. And it's going to actually stream on all Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, um, live me, everything at the same time, like at the same time. So when we go up live, we're going to go up live on all the streaming platforms at one time. And I'll be able to take it to any event, any state, any anywhere with BH2 Network. Um, TST. It's probably gonna be like a in the basement with like King James and Sweets type thing. You know, it's gonna be featuring me, Amber White, um, and um, Nicole Cole's World. Um, so, um, and I think all XSJ is gonna be involved in that too. Um, I'm gonna have the whole platform, everybody on the Rap City Atlanta platform, but the um, the um, the one that's going on um, Amazon and the Roku channel that you just watch for TV is gonna be like in the basement with King James. Um, and that's why I have two um, female co-hosts, and um, I think all XSJ will be in and out um, of that that series too. And um, that's how we want to do it. So it's going to be two different shows. So uh, in the basement is going to be shot in seasons, and so you'll just come in pre-recorded and air and get edited up, and then you'll get your air date to when you um going to hit Roku, um, Comcast cable and stuff like that. So you'll see your episode just be put up. Um, into seasons and then VH1 network because I'm gonna go back to shooting every Friday at 9 o'clock where our city comes on. Um, it's got the green screen, live performance, um, radio podcast. So I'm, be, I'm gonna be do, able to do everything that I've been doing with, um, with a production team. Man. The biggest, deal. yeah, I'm the biggest, I'm gonna be the biggest podcast, radio, and TV show in Atlanta still. And there's nobody gonna take me off this pedestal. I'm here to stay. Yeah, come on your show. Yeah, definitely, man. Barter. Uh, definitely barter, man. Um, um, I'm actually setting it up, especially if y'all can get mobile. Um, I know Wednesday nights I do my um, showcases at Powell's Lounge. I already got two lit radio that sets up in the back. They do live streams of artists. Um, so if y'all go, uh, y'all are more Auburn than, Avenue. Yeah, Auburn Avenue. Y'all are more than no, welcome, especially got your backdrop and everything. Y'all can come set up at the events. I'm also going to be doing something like that at the VH2 Network, where, um, because I have the space and they're pretty much going to let me do what I want to do. So 
um, Rap City Atlanta is probably going to turn into a multimedia situation. So, like, when I'm looking at it in the room, on both sides, I'll probably have, like, like BD, B, BLD.com radio right here, Too Lit Radio on the side, Status Quo Network on this side. And when an artist comes in to do an interview, they get to do the interview, do a live press performance in front of all the media, and then go through an interview with everybody else. And that'll be, yeah, that'll be coming to Rhapsody ATL. So it's, and that's going to be on the VH1 network. So I'm going to connect. I'm going to do something different than everybody else is by supporting one another. How many people can you help make it to the top, but yet beat them there? So on the same platform that I'm growing my, myself, I'm going to give it to everybody else. I'm going to give you every ingredient that you can possibly get to beat me to the top. I'm still going to beat you. <laughs> I'm still gonna get to the top, but you gonna come with me. But you you gonna be you gonna be a fighting chance. So as far as I get, I'm gonna be right there. And as I get another platform, boom, there you go. You need another step. Go ahead. There's that. I just laid that in. I'm already over here. Cause by the time I do something else, I got something else to lay out for somebody else to get. Y'all go get that. I'm the greatest entertainer in the country, but I'd rather spend my time showing you three or four other people that's just as great. And that's how you win. That's what's so, up. That's what's so. up. So, right, uh, you got the layout, you got the plan. Been working on it, baby. You got to work it on when you want to be a mogul. I said I bring superstars, um, but if I bring superstars, you don't want that many people. You know what I'm saying? So I, I move a little different. I, I little different. That. Okay, so how do people get in touch with you if they want to? Uh... Rat City ATL are very Googleable. Um, Rat City ATL at King James. At I am King James on Instagram, and that's King with an X, so it's I A M K X and G James. So I don't spell my name with an I because there's no I in team, so it can't be I and a King. Okay. okay. That's how you find me different. Usually, when you put I A M K X, I pop up anywhere on the ground. Um, if you put up Rap City, uh, you'll see Rap City ATL right now. So much yeah, money. I was a. Uh trying to share your story earlier and put it so I put it K and then put the X and each whole name that came up yeah yeah I I okay <laughs> I, I, I pretty much put myself in my own lane so um, I can become what I am um, transition over trap city NT you know what I'm saying let me trap you out I trap artists like crack in the 80s on the new Nino Brown Okay. I'm talking that pimp shit. Good crack, good crack. Good crack. So you can drop it in the water and come back. It's coming back, bro. All my artists come back with that threat, but trap. A one. I literally is no pressure, man. Um, I guess we're gonna see y'all next week, man. We out of here. We gonna be.